Hi, so welcome to this episode of History Hunters. We are here at the ranch of Leo Carrillo, the late actor and also a conservationist here in California. He was a popular actor in the 1950s, and we're gonna go check out his ranch at Carlsbad, California. Goodbye, golly. We got here just in the nickel of time. This little visitation board here, it has a little map of where the, everything is. And uh, a timeline down here. So Matthew Kelly builds this two-story adobe and names it Los Coyotes, named for the Spanish dagger or yucca plants grown here. So this is the adobe ranch house that Mr. Carrillo later had reconstructed. So Leo Carrillo and Cruz Mendoza, an adobe expert, built the remaining structures, ponds, dams, and fences. It shows here in 1937 that he purchased the 1,750 acres of land, keeping the name Coyotes, but altering it to the Spanish spelling of Rancho de los Coyotes. In 1961, Leo Carrillo dies, and he leaves this estate to his daughter, Marie Carrillo. There's a picture of the stable. And check it out for all you viewers who are always afraid of us hitting rattlesnakes. Watch where you step. Watch where you step. Bare legs, flip flop. <laughs> <laughs> and right behind Sarah is a board that kind of gives the history of Leo Carrillo. 1880, 1961, the year I was born. He was an actor and he was a rancher Mr. California, he helped establish the Carrillo State Beach. Pretty cool little entryway here to Rancho de los Coyotes. I hope I'm saying that right. It sounds like I'm saying coyotes. Right here, you will see the little emblem here. L. C. Leo Carrillo. So what I know about Leo Carrillo is he was born in 1880. He was a product of a California family. He actually died a month after I was born, so he died September 1961. And when he was 70 years old, he became a star uh, poncho. He played poncho in this TV series, Cisco Kid. It was starring Duncan Rinaldo. He played a character in that first color TV series ever filmed. Yeah, we don't get the bullets. No poncho, but we have our hands and our ropes and our horses. Yeah, and a whole bunch of yaki Indians waiting to kill us. Uh, you know, that ain't so good for the health, Tisco. Let's go. Yeah. He was 70 years old, so he was getting up there in age when he finally had his starring role in TV. He had also played in 90 movies. Carrillo tried acting in Chicago and New York, and that opened the door to his film career. Throughout the 1930s, 40s, and 50s, Carrillo's face was well known, even if he wasn't a leading man. Leo Carrillo was a skilled actor and could pull off a variety of accents for movie roles, such as when he played the Italian character of Carlo in the 1939 movie Fisherman's Wharf. Stella mia, what's the matter? You don't have to get up so early to make my breakfast. Eh? Oh, I don't mind, Carlo, really. I want to make sure your breakfast is right. Say, this breakfast is wonderful. You're going to spoil me for sure. <laughs> oh, thank you, Carlo. I feel great. Today, I'm going to catch every fish in the ocean. Leo's father was active in Santa Monica. He was the police chief of Santa Monica and also the first mayor of Santa Monica. Leo Carrillo bought this ranch in 1937. He spent a lot of time here, but he actually lived in Santa Monica. Throughout this ranch, you will see cactus. And I understand that there's a lot of peacocks here as well. Check out the cactus. Beautiful mansions on top of the hill, way off in the distance. The city of Carlsbad owns this now. Look at this old gate. Now before they went riding, Clark Gable and his wife, Carol Lombard, got their horses right here. And then took off riding across the acreage. This ranch was a lot bigger than it is today. It's been developed into housing and there's a school nearby as well. Right off at the distance, you'll see a, probably a working windmill. Maybe it's not working anymore. This is Casa de los Caballos. 
Upstairs is the bunk room where ranch hams, vaqueros, and honored guests slept. Later, Leo made his offices here. This is the stable in the hillside. It says here, imagine hearing Leo driving his work truck in and opening the big creaking doors to toss down bales of hay for his neighing horses. The tribal level stable and its fenced corral are built naturally into the sloping hillside. The lower level included six stalls, a bullpen and watering trough were outside. His Bula Palomino horse Conquistador was stabled in the largest end stall. And there it is, his Palomino horse. I think Sarah's trying to find a way in down here. I understand that they also filmed some movies here. What? It's fake. I know, it's a replica of his Palomino horse, Conquistador. Oh, it says Amigo. Don't touch Amigo. Leo Carrillo's stables. And look, that's where the sun goddess was. Stalls for you poop. <laughs> yeah, look. Yeah. Bathrooms are over here. <coughs> it says here that when Leo was shown the abandoned adobe house and landed in 1937, he imagined all of the possibilities for a ranch of his dreams. He desired views to the ocean, but water was what he needed. So a spring on this property delivered to the flowing water inspired the vision of the ranch. There's that building and the same windmill right there. Right over there. Check out the cow skull over here. That building looks like it's seen its better days. What? Look how they hold up the eave. Very primitive, huh? This is Adobe. Oh, hack at the... Is this intentional? The hack job? Probably. Like, is that for the looks of it, or is that... I would say it's for the looks. Leo's Rancho was more than an imagined movie set. It was a 1,750-acre working ranch with cattle and horses. The Creos raised turkeys, chickens, peafowl, food crops, and fruit orchards. Who did all the work? The ranch hands and the vaqueros, or cowboys. This is the cantina that they had their drinks in here. In the cantina. It's all closed up, you can't see. Inside the adobe house, we found a treasure trove of memorabilia from Carrillo's life and career stored behind glass. This was the bedroom wing. Okay. This is the daughter's bedroom. They shared a bathroom. On the, the, to the right was the master bedroom. There were costumes relating to the 1950s Cisco Kid TV show. Some of the guests who stayed here. I think Clark Gable and Carol yeah, Lombard. Yeah, uh, quite a few. Uh... Some of the acquaintances made by Carrillo were represented in photographs on display, such as World War I fighter ace Eddie Rickenbacker and New York Governor Avril Harriman. This document highlighted Carrillo being named to a Radio Hall of Fame in 1944. Leo Carrillo met Earl Warren when they served together in the Army during World War I, and although Carrillo was a Democrat, he helped elect Warren, a Republican, as governor of California in 1942. 
As a member of the State Parks Commission, Carrillo assisted the state acquiring the historic Hearst Castle in San Simeon in 1957. He even hand-carried the deed to Sacramento. I was also intrigued to see a Stetson hat signed by Walt Disney and others during the 1946 Rancheros Visitadores event. It's an annual 60-mile ride on ranch lands near Santa Barbara. In 1913, Carrillo married Edith Shakespeare Heiselbarth of New York, whom he met backstage at the New York Theater where she had seen him perform. They remained together until her death in 1953. Impressed with that tub? Impressed? I don't know. It's, it's a drop down tub. Yeah, I mean, there's a big old spider in it. It doesn't look comfortable though. Look at that pink tile. <laughs> this is their hacienda room. And there's a picture of Leo and his wife, Didi. Nicknamed Dee Dee, right here in the same spot with those windows behind them in that picture. Same fireplace as in this picture as well. On the other side of the casa were more rooms and more glass cases filled with Cisco Kid memorabilia. There's another of his hats. Spurs, pictures of the ranch life here. All inside of this building. Very cool. Adobe building. There's some pretty cool memorabilia. Pens, puzzles, lassos, wind-up toys, coloring books, figurines, and masks, hats, toys. Cool, look at that stuff. This gun. Belonged to Leo. It was a Colt that was manufactured in 1957. Any more questions? No, I'm just looking at all this stuff. It's pretty cool. Yeah. While kids enjoyed all 156 episodes of Cisco Kid, they likely didn't realize they were pawns in product marketing. And Pancho says, you're always well fed with good Weber's bread. Right, Pancho. And every loaf of Weber's bread is enriched and extra fresh for long lasting goodness. But Cisco, these nice soft white slices of Weber's bread, they don't last long. <laughs> they go like magic. Even cowboy movie stars need swimming pools and Leo Carrillo had this one. His little cabana over here. You could swim and party at night with all your Hollywood friends. Restrooms to change in. A little bar to drink. It's an old bar. It is, huh? Yeah. Fireplace is neat looking. There's a dirt. Right here's a picture of Leo by his pool. Right there by the cabana. And the bar, it looks like the same bar. Well, how do you get in and out of that thing? It's only a waiting pool? No, it goes deeper, but... Uh, yeah, it's only a couple feet. I, I would live here, I would spruce up things. We determined that that's just a waiting pool. It's not very deep at all. So I guess it's just to get yourself wet by. So these little plaques here are pretty helpful in filling in the blanks here. Leo described in his hand illustrated Fiesta Party invitation. Lots of fun, lots of eats, one hell of a good time. This is the center of his place of entertainment and relaxation. Guests dipped into the cool water filled with well water pumped by the windmill while musicians with trumpets, guitars, and accordions played long after sunset. It looks like this is where they cooked, huh? Barbecue. Barbecue time. This is a very cool setup out here. Wait, is 
Is this where we're, is this where we're partying? That's where they washed up their meat before they cooked it. I couldn't find any information about TV shows or movies being shot here. The rancho was built as a weekend retreat for the Carrillos, situated on land once inhabited by the Lesenio people. The original 2,500 acres were located on an old Spanish land grant. Carrillo purchased 1,700 acres for just $17 an acre in 1937. Over the next few years, he designated and built a working Spanish-style ranch in tribute of his family, the Carrillo family who arrived in California in the 1700s. Leopold's great-great-grandfather, Jose Raimundo Carrillo, accompanied Junipero Serra in the Portola expedition on its northern trek from Baja, California in 1769. His great-grandfather, Carlos Carrillo, served as governor of California under Mexican rule in 1837 and 1838. A great-uncle, Jose Antonio Carrillo, was a mayor of Los Angeles, and his father, Juan Jose Carrillo, was Santa Monica's mayor from 1890 to 1897. I thought there might be some animals here for you to see, but... Fake horse. <laughs> Are you disappointed all you got to see was a fake horse? No, I didn't have any expectation. This is cool. We are making our way up the trail here to a cottage that was built for his wife where she could do her art projects. This too is adobe. Bowing out, it looks like. <laughs> it does look like it's bowing out this wall. Nice walk, huh? It said on here. Look for Leo's hand etched petroglyphs or pictures on the cottage's outer walls. I didn't really see any that stood out. Uh, it says right here, 1940. I know, but he put petroglyphs out here. Oh yeah, right here. Well, oh, it says DD something. Oh, DD's house. And then there's, it looks like a picture of a guy's head right here, mouth. Skull, ear, it's hard to see, but yeah, look at this, this is old. So if he, he died, he died 60 years ago. It looks like this wood is original. It hasn't been, unless they've completely redone the outside of this stucco, this is original wood. almost get my camera up there so this is what the inside looks like we can't go in but it gives you an idea I think I also see a outline of a guy's face right here and then nose eyes mouth I don't know if you guys can see it and right behind here looks like a, a vase uh, petroglyphs still show up through all the paint. So this is the foundry, or what was kind of like a blacksmith shop, where they made all kinds of metal parts, horseshoes, they made gates, hinges. You could hear metal pounding at all times, the hiss of the, the heat that was required to make the, the metal hot enough to be malleable. And it was all contained within this building up the hill from the ranch. Leo Carrillo died at the age of 81 from cancer. His final resting place is at Woodlawn Memorial Park in Santa Monica. 
So with the Leo Carrillo Ranch behind me, I wanna thank you so much for joining us on this episode of History Hunters. We hope that you enjoyed learning a little bit more about Leo Carrillo, the actor, the conservationist, and the person who influenced so much of a California culture way back 60, 70, 80 years ago. We also would love to have you comment, give us a like, and maybe subscribe to our channel if you haven't done so already, because we have a lot more adventures in history to show you in the future. Thank you so much. As we leave, and with this sign, Leo tells us, thank you very much, friends.